okay? It's story time, but a positive one. This is a story about two things that people can't stand coming together in one person. And that is Christian missionaries and adventure bloggers. One man combined two of those elements in one body and decided adventure vloggers <laughs> feels arrowed man um yeah a lot of you are already aware of this story uh, uh, the story of a christian missionary uh slash travel vlogger going in to uh, this island uh, inhabited by um, one of the last remaining tribes on the planet who have had insanely limited contact. Um, and the reason why I say insanely limited contact is because there have been human contact on this island and a lot of articles that were covering it didn't necessarily show the full scope. Um, but I will give you the full fucking story because one of my Twitter friends, respectable lawyer, surprisingly a very brilliant man surprisingly fucking knew so goddamn much about um what actually has gone on on that island um we're gonna talk about that in a second but before let's get into the story really quickly i'm gonna look it up because okay okay The police are struggling to recover the body of a U.S. missionary killed by a remote island tribe. Uh, Indian authorities are struggling on Thursday to recover the body of an of a, a adventurer, I guess, slash Christian missionary, who went up to uh, North Sentinel, where people live as their ancestors did thousands of years ago, and where outsiders are seen with suspicion and attacked. The, uh, the, the man's name is John Allen Chow. The person who was killed, here's a photo of him. Feels bad, man. Um, that's the guy. A travel vlogger slash... Let's, let's watch a video of his. Uh, like I said, a travel vlogger slash Christian missionary. I like that Lucky Pom Pom cares because he's cute. That's very nice of you, Lucky Pom Pom. Yeah. So... Uh, Pathak said Chow and his accompl uh, accomplices planned, to, uh, planned well for last week's visiting by cam camouflaging to visit his fishing. Chow appeared to, have, uh, to be a full conscious as he wrote in his notes. God sheltered him from Coast Guard and Navy. In an Instagram post, his family said it was mourning him, their beloved son. Da da da. Hold on. Let's see what the video's on now. Let's take a look at the video. Tribe has been known to shark and missionary has been killed on an island off the coast of India. Indian authorities believe 26 year old John Allen Chow was murdered by members of a tribe on a remote island he had visited. They say the tribe has been known to shoot outsiders with bows and arrows, and now the Indians are struggling to figure out how to recover his body. Senior Foreign Affairs Correspondent Amy Kellogg live from Milan with more. Hi, Amy. Hi, Leland. Well, not only is it dangerous to approach this tribe, but it's really complicated, so much so that regional police have employed some specialist anthropologists to help uh, get to these people. They've got to conduct a murder investigation, after all, with a totally uh. remote tribe. And then also, as you mentioned, try to get that body. I mean, some fishermen several years back approached the island inadvertently. They drifted on shore they were killed, and then um, these North Sentinelese tribesmen shot at helicopters back in 2004 uh, that were coming to rescue them after the Indian Ocean tsunamis. Now, the Reuters news agency quoted a source who was... Bro, this is so silly, dude. This is so fucking silly, dog. Yeah, yeah, everyone knows not to go to that island, okay? And we're going to talk about exactly why. Because, like, these indigenous people who still live uh, without contact... Uh, uh, from from modern humans for fucking decades, they often die. Okay, they have no pathogens. They haven't evolved in a level uh, to 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 cope with our diseases. Okay, so that's one of the many reasons why. Uh, it's one of the many reasons why it's fucking. Uh, it's 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 illegal in some instances to establish contact with these people. And for the most part, um, like why the fuck would you ever go there, dude? 
why the fuck would you ever go and try to like try to live out the Christian colonization days? Like play Christian colonizer with this like last remaining indigenous people on the fucking planet? Fuck you. You deserved a goddamn arrow through your chest. You fucking dipshit. So that's number one. Fuck him and his family too, who like think that he's like, oh my god, <laughs> oh, our boy fucking died. Okay? Fuck this dude. Don't fucking go and establish contact with a fucking indigenous people and, and wipe out their entire population because they don't have the same immune system that you do. Fuck yourself. So that's number one. For all of the people who want to understand what my perspective is, that's my perspective. You deserve a fucking arrow in the chest, you fucking dipshit. Thank God it happened in a video game and not in real life. So that's one. Two... Um, it happened in real life as well. That's a terms of service thing that I need to do, I think. I don't fucking know. I'm covering the news. Okay, so that's one. Now they're trying to recover the body. Well, good fucking luck trying to recover the body. Fuck you. Uh, that's not going to happen either. Now, there have been instances where this tribe has literally fucking killed fishermen accidentally. In which case... I, I feel bad. I feel bad for the fishermen. They're just trying to make their own fucking goddamn money. And then, uh, you know, some high winds or whatever, push their little uh, dinky dolly over to their beach and they get fucking brutally murdered. That sucks. That's an entirely different situation. This guy knew that there was a fucking desolate group of indigenous people and thought, I am going to turn them with the good word of fucking our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, this, these people have been there for like 50,000 fucking years or however goddamn long they've lived there. I don't think Jesus Christ cared enough to find them if Jesus Christ even fucking existed. He had plenty of time to go over there and spread the goddamn word himself. And it didn't happen, okay? So obviously, it's not going to fucking happen. You dumb dipshit. You fucking selfish, dumb dipshit okay so let's get back to this island okay because like this island had been contacted by human beings and uh, you're like human beings oh, holy shit as if they're like a different species obviously they're not this island had been contacted by a fucking um like a west like a western fucking colonizer i wonder if the tribe is homophobic that could change my view on this <laughs> bro Bro, B R Y three three six one six. I don't know if you were being. I don't know if you were fucking memeing, dude. I don't know if you were memeing when you said that. I think you were being serious because of the things that you said about Muslims in the past. But that. <laughs> what, dude? <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> That's neoliberal identity politics literally to the maximum level. I hope you were memeing, dude. I hope you were memeing, dude. <laughs> Have they been affected by toxic masculinity? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh jesus christ that's so stupid i'm high as fuck that's why oh my god he's not memeing dude he's being serious okay um back to the back to the story at hand because this is a great one everybody calm down i've i've calmed down i'm alive uh i'm well I'm going to I'm going to dial it. I'm going to reel it back in, okay? <laughs> if any of them are turfs, we send in the marines. <laughs> like <laughs> this group of people do not have technology, okay? They have not like they don't have the same kind of technology. They were never impacted by trade. So that's part of the reason why like they never were able to uh to uh to evolve and also uh, take advantage of all of the technological achievements that other nations and other cultures had had uh, focused on by way of trade or by way of war, completely desolate. They're, they're from an anthropological standpoint, like their culture is entirely different, like entirely different. There is, we have no way of understanding if they're homophobic or not, but like, but like by looking at that and thinking like well, and adopting your worldview and saying like, ooh, that's actually uh, 
are they homophobic? If then, I don't, I actually will, will genuinely feel bad about the Christian missionary. Oh, so it's for them, it's okay for them to be ignorant, but not poor people in the South. Exactly. That is exactly what I'm saying. It's literally what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> they sounded like atheists. The quivers being pulled from the, the arrows being pulled from the quitter, quiver sounded like they were atheists. Um, did you know that the Oral Roberts University that he attended shamed their overweight students in the seventies? What the fuck? Oh, that's insane, dude. <laughs> what if they're heterophobic checkmate libs? Okay. Where was I? Ah. What if the indigenous people come here to spread their word of God? Can we shoot them with an arrow? <laughs> <coughs> okay. Now I'm going to read you guys some additional information that is genuinely brilliant from my friend at respectable, respectable lawyer who knows a lot about this, knows a lot more than I do. I'm going to read this like Twitter thread, which has gone viral since yesterday. There's been a lot of talk about the missionary killed uh, by the natives of North Sentinel Island. They're probably so aggressive because of this weirdo, Maurice Vidal Portman, not related to Natalie Portman. So here's a big thread about this creep and some facts from my decade-long obsession with the island. So this is the guy. So this island was actually, con oh shit, terms of service. Oops, uh, there's a lot of dicks in this. So I'm not going to I'm not going to show you guys uh anything but uh yeah there was a the Sentin the Sentinelese are often described as uncontacted but this is not strictly true they have a very significant contact in 1880 with Commander Portman Portman the black sheep third son of some minor noble was assigned by the English Royal Navy to administer and pacify the Andaman Islands a job he pursued from 1880 to 1900 with the full measure of his own perversity so it turns out this guy not only was like uh some form of a christian crusader i guess or like a neo uh colonial and um and and he was also a, a missionary in his own right uh spreading the good word of jesus christ our lord and savior and also uh taking a look at uh, the the burly bodies of a lot of these uh these indigenous boys um, he loved uh, he loved erotically portraying the Andamanese, and he indulged his passion for for photography by kidnapping members of various tribes and posing them in mock Greek homoerotic compositions. I won't show you the full one because that's a terms of service violation. But he kidnapped some of the people from that island. During his 20 years in a sexualized heart of darkness, Portman measured and cataloged every inch of his prisoners' bodies with an obsessive focus on their genitalia. So there's some like uh, some of his writing here. Um, uh, the Mary Louise Pratt's 18, uh, 1985 notion of body skin in the original co in the colonial gaze, male genitalia appear to have a particular point of fascination for Portman and Molesworth. They're referring to Portman, the the OG guy that we were talking about. Um, yeah, respectable boy is a great writer. Yeah, he stole children. Imagine being a Neolithic person spending a few weeks in this guy's rotating menagerie. He stole children from the, uh, yeah, he would say stuff like penis is larger than usual, penis is smaller. Portman spent most of his time in the greater Andaman Islands, but in, the 1880, but in 1880, he landed North Sentinel. The natives fled, and his party ventured inland to find a settlement, which had been abandoned in haste. But they located an elderly couple and a few children. They were able to abduct. The couple quickly died, likely from ailments to which they had no immunity. So that's the big problem, okay? That's the really big problem with indigenous people or people that have not been contacted, like remote tribes that have not been fucking contacted by outside life. Um, they, they literally immediately fucking, even like establishing contact with those people kills you. I don't know what the fuck that says about, uh, evolution or the theory of evolution or, or, you know, uh, but that's just crazy. That's crazy. <sighs> so yeah, even our farts just fucking kill these people. 
Yeah. So uh, that's all. I, I, I'm going to get to that as well. Thank you, Cheddar Man. Uh, it's worth it says uh, it's worth noting that tribes in that area that have had more contact than modern people with modern people are rapidly dying out. Like there are instances where like a tribe went from sixty thousand, sixty thousand people to to like nine thousand after uh, I, like because they found clothes of uh, like they they started wearing like they went in and they found the clothes of like uh, modern people, like um and and. Uh, they wore them or something or they brought them back and then it like it uh, i don't know what kind of disease it was but it like spread rapidly through them and and decimated their entire uh population so it's 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 genuinely fucking terrifying okay the children spent a few weeks with portman doing god knows what um after which he returned them to the island Portman returned on a couple occasions, but the Sentinelese hit from him each time because the child that survived went back and was like, holy fuck, dude, this guy is psychotic, kept touching my dick and like doing weird shit. And then he would write in his notebook about the size of my penis. So like, obviously everyone like, you know, everyone obviously was like, oh fuck, let's run away from this psychopath. So there's that. The children spent a few. The story related by the children was certainly passed down among the hundred or so inhabitants of the island, and even today, Portman's fatal kidnapping is just beyond a human lifetime. So, when the Indian government attempted contact with anthropologists in the 1960s and 70s, the Sentinelese were understandably hostile to outsiders, and the Indian government soon gave up. In 1981, a cargo ship named the Primrose ran aground on the coral reef surrounding North Sentinel. The crew radioed for assistance and settled in for a long wait. But in the morning, they saw 50 men with bows on the beach building makeshift boats. The crew called for an emergency airlift and were evacuated, and not a moment too soon. Rough waves had thwarted the Sentinelese in their attempts to board, but the weather was clearing. So they fucking saved this, uh, the ship, but they, I mean, they saved the wrecking, uh, they, I mean, they saved the fucking crew off the ship that was wrecked, but the shipwreck stood, right? Um... So then, apparently, the ship and cargo were left at the island, evading, uh, awaiting discovery by Neolithic eyes. Today, you can still see the gutted remains on the Primrose on Google Earth. Look at how fucking pretty that is, by the way. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's so dope. Imagine climbing on board that ship, completely alien vessel filled with alien things. Imagine seeing simple machines for the first time, a hinge, a latch a wheel, things that would instantly make sense in a satisfying way. Others would be so incomprehensible to avoid notice. I've never been able to find out what cargo was on the Primrose in all of my years of reading. There was about a hundred tons of some sort of consumer product on the board, on board, and I'm curious to what it was, but even absent the cargo, think about all of the things that must have been on that ship. In the 1990s, when anthropologists returned to the island to make new attempts at contact, they were met with a different attitude. Not friendly, exactly. But they were willing to accept gifts. So, uh, these guys, like, rapidly advanced. Okay? They fucking rapidly advanced, obviously, since the 1990s, because they, were, they made contact with technology for the first time ever. Now, I'm sure there's, like, there's, like, 300 people in here. I'm sure there's a couple dipshits uh, that are here just to troll. Or there's a couple dipshits who are like, wait a minute. Is this like a race thing, dude? Like they're, you know, are they, are they not like civilized because of their race? No, just for the record, this is exactly the, the reason why I'm mentioning this part is so you understand that. Okay. Um, they made contact with technology rather than they made contact with technology for, uh, for the first time in their own way rather than getting fucking colonized and, and being violently wiped out. Because for a lot of places, like a lot of, um, um, for, for a lot of uh, places around the world, indigenous folk met very similar ends, right? They were, co they were colonized, they were enslaved, um, and they were taken advantage of, rather than, um, rather than allow to fucking evolve at the same pace with everyone else. Um, by way of by way of travel, by way of, of trade, 
and even in some instances by way of war. So that's why this is a significant part that I must mention to you, because obviously now they are they their 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 uh, opinion of the outside world has radically shifted, and now they're accepting gifts in, instead of like being insanely hostile. Um, so here's a video of one of those encounters where they uh, accept a gift. This is a six-minute video. Let's watch this here. By the government in 1991. The contact party under the administration is always accompanied by security. The arrow shooting centenaries are a constant fear. what the residents of North Sentinel Island call themselves. They have been indexed as contacted sentinels. Gifts of coconuts are means to overcome limited communication and uncertain vocabulary. Coconuts do not grow on these islands, but they are valued by the sentinels. So there's like some children there. Uh, there's some like island. Uh, there's some of the Sentinelese. And I think you'll start, you'll see some of them now. This is too blurry for TOS. But yeah, here. <laughs> Their penises don't look that small to me. Okay, TOS, TOS, oops. Um, also, it's not nudity. It's not nudity. It's not nudity. It's not nudity. Uh, there was, it was like two... Uh... Okay, that was... Um... <laughs> the kid in the back's like, feels good, man. <laughs> Feel good, man. Um, what religion, bro? <laughs> what religion are you we talking about? These people have like <laughs> the first two women kissed on NBC. First two women kissed on NBC. Now this. <laughs> Should we airdrop tech to these people once a year? No, I don't think we should, dude. I, I think you let them fucking... Who gives a fuck? Let them live purely, dude. Applying Western standards of clothing to, to terms of service. <laughs> um, Can we get a follow gift for the kid? He's like, la. <laughs> um... Yeah, let's let's make sure that this like happy tribe of people who don't know anything, yeah, who who don't know anything about how fucking brutally awful uh, human beings are. Let's go fuck their lives up with depression and anxiety, dude. Let's like give them the internet. Okay.
<laughs> Imagine trying to explain memes to these people. They could probably still understand it better than some of my relatives. Holy shit. I'm sure they have internal conflict, but you don't know. They might not. Maybe they have a totally successful matriarchal society. I'm willing to bet their anxieties are not the same as ours, though. That they probably are much happier. This is an amprim argument. Um, if, our, if literal contact kills them, um, then I say we don't. I say we don't touch them. I am an anarcho-primitivist, I guess. <laughs> like, let's give them Obama phones, dude. <laughs> Said someone in the chat. <laughs> you think they're Antifa? They, these guys are the original Antifa. All right, I'm going to keep watching. And I'll tell you, I'll describe the things without the children dicks that are involved in the video. <laughs> This is madness, dude. This is fucking madness. Do you think they're harboring Saudi terrorists among them on the island? <laughs> I wonder if they were once super advanced, but then the regressive left took control. Bro, this island had all of the technological advancements. They were this was basically Wakanda, but then the regressive left came and they were like, "You guys, we really shouldn't uh we really should start gendering people appropriately." And then look, all hell break loose, dude. They probably had a Jordan Peterson out there who was like, "Listen, the antidote to chaos is by embracing your masculinity and cleaning your room, bucko." And then no one and then enough people in the Sentinelese Island, we're not on board with that. They said, no, Jordan Peterson, you're wrong. B uh, uh, <laughs> Bill C-16 will not destroy Western civilization. And they fucking destroyed it, dude. It did. For <coughs> everyone... <coughs> everyone fucking... Everyone was... Everyone was locked away in jail. Even the guy... Even literally, the... <laughs> Even the president, he put himself in jail, and then they all, like, there was a, a, they wiped out their entire population by jailing one another because they kept misgendering people, and then they kept misgendering people within the jail, and then everyone, everyone basically was, <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what's happening right now in Canada, right now. Yeah, so that's why they, it's just... Western virus is taking hold of Hassan at this very moment. Yeah, so that's what happened. And now they are living the consequences. Now they're living the consequences of allowing the feminine chaotic energy to enter the workforce, bucko. It makes me very sad when I contemplate how difficult it must be that women and men working side by side with one another rather than women staying home. And cooking, like in the Sentinelese, the early days of the Sentinelese, when women were tasked with finding coconuts, but that was pretty much it. But now, now the women want to hunt. Why are they hunting, you might ask? Well, it's because a couple of them read this text that they found when a, when a colonizer came over to the island and... <laughs> the colonizer came over to the island and gave us... Uh, a pamphlet that said, uh, that had a, fo a photo of this this Rosie the Riveter character. I, I don't really know necessarily what this character is, but uh, it was a representation of dangerous trauma. It, it, it exposed the two-headed serpent. A manly figure, a figurine of sorts that looked like a man. <laughs> but you could tell she had tits and the women on the island that saw that thought yes we can we too can if hillary clinton can break the glass ceiling so could we <laughs> and then they started hunting and guess what everyone in my toronto universe i mean uh, my my sentinelese <laughs> 
<laughs> University class. The women did break that glass, but at what cost? So yeah, this that that's that's basically the story. Um, yeah, post coconut neo Marxists came through and and they fucking ruined the island, and now they have to wear they have to eat rats. I wonder if they eat rats at this island. <laughs> As you know, in Venezuela, they eat rats. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, the antidote to chaos. <laughs> so, here is the interesting element here, of course. Uh, obviously, I don't want to show you nudity, but I will try to find a screen grab that isn't uh, nudity uh, related. That, my friends, was forged. And this is significant. Because this was the first time that you can actually see like forged metal and i believe it's cold forged metal and they think that uh or at least the anthropologists that that established contact think that this is because they got to um uh, they 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 established contact with the uh with the fucking shipwreck so yeah that's not godzilla's dick that's just um Isn't it crazy that they know how to fucking build arrows? Like, everyone has been able to build arrows. Like, doesn't that shock you? So, yeah, they're cold forging metal at this point. Oh, yeah, Respectable already talks about this as well. Okay, so let's get back to that. And in those videos, you can see that these pre-Iron Age people now had metal weapons like the knife carried by this man. They had scavenged metal from the primrose and cold, for, cold forged it in the tools. And what I assume that they also did was probably... Um, they probably also... Uh, what do you call it? They probably also had knives. Like, they probably found knives on the, um, on the primrose. And then they realized, like, oh, this is a tool that we could use. Um... So yeah, after collecting gifts for a few minutes, a few members of the tribe would approach and make menacing gestures, signaling that it was time for the outsiders to leave. They have never lost their desire for isolation, despite the gifts. And they remained consistent in their intolerance against intruders. In 2006, two fishermen were killed after drifting into the island when their anchor detached while they were sleeping. The Sentinelese are lucky that they were so effective at preventing contact. So they killed the two, um, yeah... They killed two fishermen. Uh, and I remember, like, remember, I mentioned that. Um, the Sentinelese are lucky they were so effective at preventing contact. The neighboring Jawara wasn't so fortunate. The tribe went from 9,000 to a couple hundred from a lack of genetic immunity and only forestalled annihilation due to aggressive segregation. Their future is bleak. Yet on North Sentinel, they've maintained a small community for 60,000 years, which is, by all indications, happy. There's no way to integrate them into the modern world without wiping out nearly every member of their tribe. This is why I said, like, it's, I take a more anarcho-primitivist approach. And their aggressiveness is not for the mark of, is not the mark of savagery. It's just that their conception of outsiders is mostly framed by some foot-faced English pervert who murdered some old people and did weird things to their kids. So let's do them a favor and leave them alone. Oh, okay. So this is interesting. These are updates I hadn't seen before. So someone got back because the thread went viral. Someone got back and said it was chicken feed. My father, Captain Robert F., was one was one of the ones who airlifted those on the Primrose out, and it was only later that he found out it was just a lot of chicken feed. He did have some pretty interesting accounts of the experience, though. Someone also pointed to me that the book described a two-month salvage operation on the Primrose was nearly, was almost certainly observed by the Sentinelese. And um, they dug up a memoir written by Portman, and it seems possible that Portman may not have kidnapped the Sentinelese after all as has been reported by every contemporary history of the island. It is somewhat ambiguous, but on page 726, Portman describes landing on Sentinel, and in the following paragraph discusses his time there, saying, one day while walking through the jungle. He then describes the abduction as happening after a few days later while crossing the island. 
and the island had been discussing was North Sentinel, but he refers to his captives of Jawara, the name of the neighboring tribe. It's hard to tell from context if he was using this term for the Sentinelese as well. The writing is less than clear. However, my read is that he was talking about the North Sentinel, but it's not definitive. Imagine, dude, I mean, this is literally like for you to comprehend what it's like when you get contacted by this like outside force that you have no fucking idea. Like you don't understand anything. It, it's it, they're not human beings like they're humanoids in their eyes. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it would literally be like an alien establishing contact uh, with you on planet Earth with like insane technology and immediately murdering your family and the reason why your family is fucking murdered is because the alien has some fucking pathogens you know what i mean like that has like advanced space aids or whatever and like even if you establish contact with the alien you fucking die and i know that everyone's first uh, reaction is like, why won't we give them sterilized technology? Well, why would you? I don't understand. Like, it, it, most of them would die at that point. You would eradicate them completely. You would decimate them. Space AIDS is airborne. This is canon. Like, come on, fucking, come on, guys. I mean, seriously, follow me here, okay? <laughs> but the ones that are left could have iPhones, so that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's so stupid. Like... That's a very selfish notion. That's the point I wanted to make originally. Like, um, that that perspective that like we want to give them, um, you know, we want to sterilize technology and like give them to alter their lives. That is a very selfish perspective. That's a very like, um, that is literally the colonizer mentality. Obviously, like colonization has been uh, has obviously been supported not just by the actual violent individuals themselves, but a, but a generally um, apathetic public, you know, because they're like, these people are savages. Who gives a shit? We're giving them technology. We're, we're uh, enlightening them. <laughs> you know what I mean? In this instance, like literal contact would kill them. Do you know what I mean? Like actual contact would fucking kill them. And there are still so many people who are like, yeah, no, we should still, we should still give them technology. Like they, they should benefit from it. It's like benefit how they're fine. I'm sure they have like internal conflict as someone else pointed out, but like beyond that, they seem to be doing all 